Hey guys, welcome back. Sean with Fairly Local Plumbing. Today I'm going to show you guys how to install a kitchen sink faucet. This one is a Moen Align and it's a high arc with the spring top there. Uh, very simple and uh, easy faucet to uh, install. Uh, we've shown you a few already. This one's just a little bit different, it's a different style. Uh, some tools you're going to need a hacksaw blade or a sawzall will work or some kind of tubing cutter. Um, I've gotten desperate to use my, my razor blade before because this is a very thin wall. Uh, we're gonna need a basin wrench. Now, if anybody doesn't know what a basin wrench is, this reaches up into there and tightens down bolts up above and it's adjustable. You can move it to different lengths if you need to. That way you can get down below. We don't have a lot of space in between the sink and the, and the faucet, or the, the sink and the, the cupboard. You, you need something that's really tight like that. Uh, we have some small channel locks. That's to hook up our 3 8 supply lines. A Phillips head screwdriver for our disposal or a impact with a Phillips head screwdriver on it. All right, so let's get started. First thing we're gonna do, oh, and a knee pad, protect those knees. All right, first thing we're gonna do is we have two holes here. It's a single hole application. And then we have a second hole here, which is for future. Like if you want to put a soap dispenser or maybe an RO uh, faucet. Right now, we're just going to put a cover there. This cover is very simple. This has, a, this has a protective cover on it, but it's brush, brush nickel. So is the faucet. The faucet also is a brush nickel or satin. So that thing likes to move around a lot. So what I do, just kind of cheat here. If I don't have anybody with me, I'll just put something on top of this kind of heavy, keep it from moving. And we'll get down there and I'll reach up there and tighten that, but we'll do that all at one time. So next thing we'll do is we'll get our faucet ready. Now, it comes with this gasket here. This gasket on the bottom. This is to help keep it water tight. That way no water can seep down past that hole and into your, your cabinet create water damage. Um, it does have little notches in it so it has a certain way that it goes on here to keep it from moving. Just get that set up the way it's supposed to be first. Okay and we're just gonna feed these supply lines. These are our supply lines. These are three eighths. These should go on most angle stops now. Um, if your angle stop is a different size, you'll have to make the adjustments. Um, I recommend replacing your angle stops if you're removing a sink and installing a new one. It's always good to have uh, new angle stops on there, if, especially if they're a multi-turn angle stop that turn, turn, turn to shut off, multiple turns to turn on. We like to build a nice quarter turn angle stop. It's very fast and they're, they last a lot longer. If you're already set up there, don't worry about it. If you already have a quarter turn on there, and it seems to be functioning properly, it's easy to work. Go ahead. All right, so with these faucets, these things are so big and heavy, I'll take and I'll kind of counterbalance it just when I'm installing it. Just kind of turn it sideways. That way all the, all the weight is mostly, or even I can take this off for a moment, and that helps just to keep it in place. So what we're going to do is we're going to go underneath, we're going to take this first washer that's going to go over the shaft, and then we're going to take this nut right here and that's going to tighten on, and we're going to use this tool that comes with the mowing pack. Pretty nifty tool, just put your nut in there, and then it's, it's open all the way through, so that way you can bring it all the way up through, that shaft can go all the way down there through there, we can tighten that all the way up. The next thing we put on after that is this plastic nut here. And that's to protect this when we put our shower or our, our faucet head in. It comes with a steel braided hose here. Now, if we have that going through that shaft, it could be rubbing on that metal. So what this does is that protects that from happening. It keeps that from rubbing. So let's go down underneath. Let's see if I can set a good camera view here. Now that tool is good for getting it mostly tightened, but I wouldn't rely on it to, 
to make it completely tight because it's just it's just not all you need, especially for a faucet as big as that one. It has a lot of a lot of leverage that you can yank it and pull it and get it to move. Okay, so we're gonna start with our cocktail cover. That cover for the hole. We've got our disposal up there holding it down, or somebody else could be up there holding it down for us. So take that. Spin it on, and like I said, if you have an RO already here, you can use that for the RO faucet. If you have a soap dispenser that comes with the faucet, or you want to purchase one after, you can do that. Also, you can do an air switch for your disposal. Instead of having the switch underneath a cabinet or up on the counter, you can use an air switch. It's just a plug that you can just press down and turn your disposal on and off. That's pretty cool with that. I like to use those. Okay. We're gonna put our first washer on here. It's just gonna fit around those hoses that it's made for. We'll take our tool and we'll put our, our nut inside of it. We'll just slide it up there. And get it, get it turning. Make sure everything is going nice and smooth. If it's going hard, back it out. If you know you're going on straight, you haven't cross-threaded it. I just had one today earlier where I had to use some, some lubricant to really get it to move. It was just probably machined poorly or whatever, whatever reason, but it was being kind of a pain. All right, so now I'm gonna take this and get this as tight as I can with my hand. And I might even take some, my, my little channel locks here, give it a little extra turn but now i'm really going to take my my basin wrench and give it that extra that it needs now before i do that i'm going to jump back up top and make sure that we're straight that way we're not tightening it in a crooked position we look pretty good just oops, put that down if it's crooked right now while it's loose just give it a little little tap Get to where it's supposed to be. Now we can tighten it down all the way. So I'm gonna take my basin wrench so it can go, it can tighten or it can flip over and it can loosen. So right now obviously we're gonna tighten and also it has an adjustment on it. So if you need it to be way down low, you can make it higher, smaller, depends. Right now I'm gonna have it all the way down. I'm gonna take it and all the way, that nut should be fitting right in between the very end of this. It shouldn't be back here. It won't, it won't tighten down. You want it to be right at the tip of this, right at the tip there where it catches on that, that hook. It takes a little getting used to, but once you get it, man, uh, you never know how you used anything else. All right, that's on. So now we're gonna take our plastic nut. We're gonna put that up there next to protect that stainless steel hose for our sprayer. Okay, now let's jump back up again. We're gonna take, we're gonna install our hose. So the hose comes, it comes in separate pieces, the whole thing, and then it has a weight down below. You don't need to have any kind of Teflon tape or any paste or anything on this. It's got a seal in there already. And if you ever have one of these leaking, it's usually because this has gotten loose. So if you ever have your, your hose that leaks down, it's usually, this is usually the culprit right here at this, this joint. Tighten it down, see if that's it first. All right, we're gonna thread it up through. Usually has a little protective thing on there that must have fallen off to help it slide through easier. All right. Okay. Come through there. We'll just let it hang there for a little bit until we get it all connected down below. Okay. So now we're going to connect this, and we just fed through there up here. It's just a click, all done. 
Next thing we have is our weight. And what I'd like to do is I'll take and I'll pull that. I'll get it set up here. And I'll pull that down. Pull it down so I know where the bottom of that that is. And I'll put it just right above there. So that way that weight is always at the bottom of that pole. What this weight does is it keeps that, it keeps this from just falling down anytime you use it. So it brings it back up. Okay, so the next thing we have is our hot and cold connections. Uh, Moen labels their stuff pretty well. The hot side here is labeled with this. So hot is on the left. We're gonna hook up to our angle stop here. This is a 3 8 angle stop. Now mine's gonna look different than yours most likely. I'm gonna track home and we use different product sometimes. Yours most likely is a metal, a metal angle stop with a 3 8 connection. Um, so mine, mine has a push on, then it has a hammer rester, which is good. You can actually put that on at your house if you have a dishwasher. It keeps that, that line from banging anytime the dishwasher comes on, the pump comes on. And here's the future line for the dishwasher, and that's just an easy T, 3 8 by 3 8 by 3 8 and I have it capped off right now. So we're gonna just tighten this up. Um, I kind of hold this this line with my hand as I do it because it likes sometimes that wants to spin on me. So I'll take it, I'll just hold it, make sure it's not going anywhere. Same thing with the cold. Now over here, I guess I'll explain this one here. This one has two cold lines. You're thinking why? I know. This is the main cold line. This is the one coming in. This is going to feed the faucet. And then it's also going to feed over this line actually goes out over to your ice maker. If you've ever had an ice maker that's really slow and doesn't want to make or doesn't want to fill up glass of water very fast, it's usually because your line is too small. We here we run a full half inch line over there, so it's a very very large line instead of like a three eighths or even a quarter inch sometimes. So if you ever have slow water, that's usually the culprit. So now we can actually take that off if we wanted to add an RO over here. If we wanted to put an RO system in over here, we can take off that cockle cover, put the faucet in there, and we can hook up our RO line to this line, disconnect it here, take this T off and just hook this water line into the cold line. I hope that made sense. I know I'm speaking a little fast here. Basically, this is for for future, and that's for future. Just trying to think ahead. Okay, so now at this point, our faucet is installed. We're ready to go. Uh, we'll clean up here in a little bit after we get done. So we're gonna do the drain now. And if you have a faucet that's already, uh, or if you're living in a home where you already have a faucet, your drain was already set up. This may not pertain to you. If you want to set up a new sink and set up a new drain. Hopefully this will be helpful. Or put in a new garbage disposal. This one's a Moen GXP33C, it's a, a third horsepower. That's uh, pretty nice. Comes with a cord, which is nice. The in-sink aerators from, I'd say, Depot or whatever, don't come with a cord, you have to use your own or you have to buy a new kit. This one comes with it. The only downside I found with this one so far is on other disposals, down here in the bottom, you have a reset, which is good. But down here in the bottom, usually there's a place where you can put an, a quarter inch Allen wrench in there. And whenever this thing gets clogged or something gets stuck in there, you can take that Allen wrench and you can spin it and you can get it unclogged usually. But this doesn't seem to have that function, which is kind of weird to me. I'll have to check out the instructions to see if there's some other way of fixing that rather than taking it apart. But. That's the only downside I've seen so far. Other than that, pretty compact, works well. Okay, that's what we did. Sorry, I'm working on talking here. All right, so we had these, these set screws screwed all the way up to this metal flange here. This is gonna be your top flange that goes, your waist seat that goes on top. Then it's gonna go your, this little cardboard uh, O-ring here. Let's have this metal, flange here, looks kind of like a flower. And that's gonna be used for tightening these set screws up too. And there's a, a ring right here that keeps that from sliding past. So when I take that ring off, this can slide out. I put that ring back on there, it'll tighten up to that ring and it'll, it'll pull that 
that top flange down and make it tight. So now we've got that apart. We're gonna take some plumber's putty, which is like Play-Doh, but not Play-Doh, so don't let your kids play with it. We're gonna roll it out into a rope. See here, Oops. balancing act. Right. We're just gonna roll it out. Doesn't have to be real thick. We have a stainless steel sink here, so we don't need a lot. If you have a uh, like a cast iron sink, a, a sink with a that has a, a thicker rim here, where that's gonna go into. See how this one's? I mean, it's like a sixteenth of an inch. Some of them, like the cast irons, they're like quarter of an inch. You'll want to have more putty. You want to use plenty of putty to get in there and really fill that space. So now we just press it down, flatten it out. So like I said, it's really thin up there. And we're just going to take it up top. And as you can see right here, it has letters on it. We just want to face those, make them nice and centered. That way the finished product looks really nice. When you look at your sink, you're looking at the writing the way it's supposed to be. What we're gonna do is just take our hand and put a little weight on it. Just press it down. Hold it there. Get some of that started. Make sure we're lined up still. Come back down. And now we're going to install the assembly here. So we'll start off with this, this cardboard or I don't know, composite gasket. We'll put it up there. We'll put our flange. And we'll put the assembly here. And then this is the tricky part, which takes some practice. I'm gonna take my, my ring here, and it's a split ring. See how it opens up there? I'm gonna take my thumb, I'm gonna press that one little corner of the split ring. I'm gonna hold the flange up with or the assembly up with my other finger, and I'm gonna roll it around and snap it up there. I know I made it look pretty easy right there, and hopefully it is easy for you. But if it's not, don't feel bad because it took me forever to figure that out. Okay. So now we have this. I usually center my, my bolts. There's three bolts. I just have one facing towards me. The other two spread out evenly. And you want to make sure when this is tightening up, that you're tightening up to this flange and not up to the sink. If you get this flange off so the, the screws can go past, you don't want to do that. Um, it's, it'll put nice big dents in your sink and you will not be happy. Okay, so you can use your screwdriver, Phillips head screwdriver. Works perfectly well. Just takes a little bit more time. You can use an impact or a screw gun like I'm going to. Do in the right direction. set. And I like to go with my, my screwdriver at the end, just do it hand tight, just to make sure I can feel that it is tight. Got that. Okay. Next part. So your garbage disposal is going to come with this fitting right here. And what this is going to do, it's going to attach to the drain of the disposal right here. And it's going to have this metal flange that's going to tighten it on there. Now certain disposals, they like to have the, the rubber gasket on the inside. Then you put the flange on there. Some of them have a, uh, a rubber gasket that fits over this, this this uh, tailpiece, this flared flange, which is, I like the best. This one, they want you to install it on the outside to press over there because there's a lot of play inside of this, this gas, or this, uh, where is this, this washer. And there's a lot of room for that just to slide over there. If you, if you tighten it down too much, it'll slide right past there. So this particular model, they want the gasket on that side Put your metal washer or flange or whatever you want to call it. I'm not sure what you call it. 
and take your screws here, get them started by hand. Also, just want to let you guys know that inside here, so above here, above this, is a, the spot where your dishwasher hose is going to go into there. Now, now right now, we don't, we're in a new build, so we don't have the dish, dish, uh, dishwasher installed yet. And if you don't have a dishwasher, there's a plug inside there. You see that? Now, when you go to install the dishwasher, you just pop that plug out and then fish it out. If you don't have a, a dishwasher, then just leave that plug in there. It's not going to hurt anything. All right, so we're gonna face this down. We're gonna be facing this down because what's gonna be happening is it's gonna be coming out of the wall, it's gonna to go to the P-trap, and it's gonna go up into here. So I want that facing down towards the floor. Tighten it down, Phillips screw driver. Okay, so these aren't too heavy, these mowings. So I can do them one-handed, well, well two-handed. I can hold up with one hand and then work on it. Some of them are heavy, especially ones that have like a lot of insulation. They're really thick ones, really expensive ones that uh, are almost silent. They can be pretty heavy. So what I do is I take my foot here, just put it below. I know you're kind of contorted here, but, or if you want to put something else underneath there, I don't know, but this just seems to work for me. It's pretty quick. Now on here, the very top, you see this flange that's out here on the, on the top of the disposal, it has these little teeth, Oops. these little teeth right here. Those teeth have to go basically onto this little ramp right here, this little rim. And that rim goes from low to high. So as you put that tooth on there, as it goes up, it's compressing that and tightening it down. So we're gonna put that, and we're gonna face, on this particular one, we're gonna kind of look at it first, see which way we want that P-trap to be. This one's pretty close to the wall back here where this, where our male adapter is coming out of the wall. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna turn it a little bit. And you know what, we'll turn it towards the disposal, or the dishwasher. That way it's easier to hook up the drain line when it's time. So we'll just give it a little bit of a turn. We can always move it if we need to. Kind of get it started. Find a good position to start with. Okay, so our P-trap goes back into the wall. That's where our main drain's going. And our P-trap is made, it's made to hold water in there, and that keeps the sewer gas from, from coming up and into your sink and into your, your air and breathing it and having health problems possible. So P-trap's pretty important. So we're gonna, right here, we're gonna take a little bit of a, a pipe compound or thread sealant. And we're gonna put it here, right on the bottom of this, this weir here. That's usually where it's gonna leak if it's gonna leak anywhere. A little precaution. We have our nuts here, and these have threads inside them. So we're gonna put those threads towards whatever we're threading to. So like for this particular one, we're gonna be threading towards there. Uh, this type, this type is different than a lot of them you might see. This flange usually is just formed uh, with plastic. This one actually comes with a rubber gasket, which I like better. I think it seals better. So we put our nut down there, threads down towards where we're threading to. Now this is going to be going into the wall, so we want these threads for this side to go back towards the wall. We're going to take our gasket and you can see that there's a, a smaller end and a thicker end. We're going to put the smaller end towards wherever we're going to. And you can see how it fits into fittings, these tubular fittings. It makes a nice seal. It fits right into that groove. So first thing we'll do is we'll put this in there. And if you can't get that in there, like look, right now we're, we can't get it in there. We haven't set this all the way in yet. We'll just pull it back down. Put that in the wall first. Now depending on how far out it's going to be, you may want to trim some of that off in the back if it's hitting that next fitting that's going down. In fact, I think we'll do that here. So I'm going to take my hacksaw blade and I usually put it over some kind of garbage can that makes a mess. 
So you need a hacksaw blade or pipe cutters or tube cutters or something. And I'm just gonna take off, I know we're, gonna, we, we're gonna, not gonna need all of this, so I'm gonna take just a little bit of it off here. I wanna ensure that we have enough play here that we can get that nut tightened on and not have to worry about it. The seal. So we're gonna push that back. We're gonna go back as far as we can. We're just gonna give it a couple turns on the nut here. Now we're gonna put our garbage disposal back up there. Just get it kind of up there, just so it's not gonna fall down. And then we're gonna adjust it to where we think that P-trap's gonna go. Now, let me show you here. This is a P-trap. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, it's a P-trap. It's gonna go from here to there. Now on this particular one, we can see that we have a big gap right there. You're like, oh great, now what? So what we have is a tailpiece extension, which I don't have with me. So I'm gonna quickly run out here and grab it. Apologize. All right, little tricks while we're at, little tricks, little tricks. Okay. So right here, we have a gap there. Pretty significant gap that we're gonna need to fill. So we, what we have here is our tailpiece extension. So we're gonna take this. Take some way to measure it. Some way to measure it. I don't have my tape measure, of course. So I'm going to the old farmer's tape measure. I'm gonna use this hacksaw blade for kind of a measurement. So now I know that that pipe starts right here. I'm gonna measure it down to the bottom. I'm gonna cut it off to the bottom where we need to be. Move that over. Something to keep the plastic from going everywhere. Making a mess. Right. Now we have this ready. So we'll go back over here. We'll put put our nut and our gasket on. And then we'll take our tailpiece extension that we just got. Take it apart. Take the nut from that, and it's going to be facing down. So we want the threads to go down. We have a different type of gasket. These are just plastic instead of rubber. Same thing though. Want the smaller end to go down. Push that on there. And we're gonna insert that into the P-trap here on the long end. And tighten that down. Now we're gonna take, and we're gonna install that right here. My bad. See, even the professionals mess up. So don't worry about it if you don't get this right. Back down. Put it back together. So all I did was I just cut some of that tailpiece extension off. It was too long. All right. Now we're back to it. We're gonna tighten this nut down. Sorry, it's dark. Not a lot of lights down here. My apologies. We're gonna get that one. We're gonna get all these really kind of hand tight. Just there. Now we're gonna come back up here and we're gonna tighten down our disposal to make sure that it's nice and tight. So what I do is I'll take my my screwdriver I just had. You put it inside these little holes right here hold the top piece and just snug it down good to go so now we're going to go through and tighten all these again make sure they're all good hope you can see that now if you're going to tighten those down you don't feel confident with your strength grab some channel locks 
some kind of wrench that's big enough and just take, just give a little extra turn, you know? These don't have to be super crazy tight. They are just plastic. And those rubber gaskets are made just to squish down so you don't have to have them tight, tight. But you do want it to be enough that it's not gonna move around. All right, so if you stuck with me through this whole thing, you've just installed a Align kitchen faucet. So what kind of is this? It's a 5923SRS for all of you uh, tech geeks. An Align Moen kitchen faucet, brush nickel. And then we have a Moen garbage disposal. So I hope you like this content. Um, I hope it brought value to you. Um, like and subscribe. And let me, down, let me know down in the comments below if you want uh, me to do anything, if you have any questions, if there's something in your plumbing, house in your plumbing that you're having a problem with and you just don't know how to do it, leave a comment below and I can try and get to that. And I would just thank you and God bless.